think the question of personal investment in scholarship is there for everybody. Um, people who happen to be traditional Christians, for example, and who study the New Testament or Old Testament or early Christianity will have uh, some, in, some personal interests or investments. The question is what they do with that. Um, I mean, I plead guilty to being a practicing Christian myself, but I try to uh, use, you might say, or deploy my Christian faith as giving me an interest in what earlier stages of uh, the tradition that I'm a part of uh, held and did. It fuels my interest in the field, but, uh, but I, I try not to let it control the results of what I do. There's this analogy that comes to mind is, you know, you're a member of a family and you have ancestors that may go back generations, perhaps even centuries. You have no control over who they were, what they were. It may be that some um, uh, 18th century ancestor of yours was a horse thief and was hanged for it. Uh, it may be that uh, some uh, ancestor of yours was uh, guilty of sedition against the government or something, uh, or was a, was a, cut, a cut purse, a, a petty thief, who knows? Uh, it may be that they were guilty of all kinds of other things. Uh, it may be that they, were, uh, they held religious beliefs that you would find reprehensible. Uh, but they're your family. And uh, I would think like anybody else, you'd probably be interested in saying, well, I want to find out who my ancestors were. And if there are horse thieves back there or if there are heretics back there, they're still my people. And I got to let them be what they are. I'm not going to make them into something they aren't. So in a similar kind of way, I think that um, if one is a Christian, for example, studying the New Testament, you have to let the New Testament people be what they were. And, uh, and you, you shouldn't be concerned to try to make them uh, acceptable to you. They, let, them, let them be what they are. Whatever they uh, held and, and whatever beliefs they entertained or uh, assumptions that they made or practices they engaged in, they're part of your tradition, so you own them in that sense, but it shouldn't uh, extend to trying to domesticate them and make them uh, compatible with, uh, with whatever modern version of Christianity you're practice of. But in the same way, it seems to me equally evident that people who um, are not, uh, deliberately not believers, sometimes anti-faith people, people who you know used to be but I got over it type people, uh, or people who regard the whole thing of uh, religious faith in a negative way have an equally difficult problem in trying to avoid their uh, animus and negativity from, uh, from prejudicing how they, uh, how they read texts. Un unless you can enter in with a certain empathy, you don't have to agree with what you're reading, but you have to have a certain empathy for these people, uh, ancient people, and uh, don't presume that they're stupid. Don't presume that they're evil, uh, or don't presume that they're, they're wicked. Uh, give them a break. And uh, that can be as difficult for an anti-faith person as it is for a person of faith.